on The Mum Show today. I am very excited. We are talking about grandparents. And here to help us go through this topic, I'm going to introduce you to my mum. So get yourself comfortable and let's get started. I'm joined here in the Mum Show kitchen once again with Pastor Claire Hooper, child therapist Emma Brown, and as a very special guest, I've brought my mum! Yay! We're so excited! But we will also give her a proper name, and that's Julie Smith, wife, mother, grandmother, educator, and the maker of me. <laughs> I kind of appreciate it. I'm going to be title. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about grandparents and how we can enjoy grandparents in the lives of our children. So welcome. Thank you. Pleased to, to be see you here. Yes. Good. I'm pleased. I'm pleased to see you here. So I'm really keen to know, first of all, I've known you as mum. Yes. I've known you as nanny. What would you say is the biggest difference between being a mum and being a grandma? Mm. Um, with being a mum, you have all the responsibility and you feel the responsibility of bringing up your children. Uh, being a grandparent, you enjoy your grandchildren because the responsibility is not exactly yours. It's your daughters or your yeah. sons. And, and so without that responsibility, the enjoyment is just more. But I fascinating. Do you know, I noticed, though, when we were through late, going through labour, oh. <laughs> just to be really graphic, that was hard for you, wasn't it? It was. You, but you've not <laughs> really? crossed over to the grandparent yet, I guess, in, no. in that moment. You're still the parent, and that's the biggest role that you have, oh, seeing yeah. your child. It is. It's, it's yeah. really emotional. Yeah. It's very raw. Because, one, you remember your own. Yes. Yeah. childbirth experiences yeah. but when you see it happening to one of your offspring you actually just want to take it for them and yeah, say, I right? know what's going to happen yeah. <laughs> I know how you're feeling right now and I wish I could take it oh, yes. interesting. and you've got four daughters as well haven't you so you've been through this <laughs> nine grandkids <laughs> times oh my goodness yes, did it feel does. different each sorry did it feel different each time you had a new grandchild according to your favorite <laughs> I have no favourites. <laughs> <laughs> they are all wonderful grandchildren, every single one of them. No, no I need a favourite daughter. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't have favourite daughters either. But did it feel different, like, did that pain, because the first grandchild, you're saying it felt very, like, <gasps> you know, watching them go through it. Did you feel like that every time one of your children, one of your girls had a child? Mm. Absolutely. Uh, I'm on the end of the phone waiting to hear yeah. if somebody is, you know, sort of the final news, yes, the baby's yeah. been born. Um, and then uh, <laughs> with one of them that was taking a long time, uh, we were travelling down to Dover and uh, I just kept getting on the phone. I'm saying, mm. something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's mm. not going right. Yeah. Of course, everything was OK, but yeah. you just... You felt it. Yeah. Every that time. was the first grandchild, actually, wasn't it? No, I was there for the first grandchild. Oh, wow. We happened to be there at a wedding mm. and she went into labour uh, two weeks mm. early. Wow. And uh, so we were actually at the hospital. <laughs> And that was, yeah, we stayed there all night. And then wow. uh, her dad, John, had to dash off on a plane to, mm. I think it was Denmark or something yeah. like that. And uh, so he went, stayed to see the birth and then off he went on the oh. plane. <laughs> That's so crazy. Because mm. I often think it's a really interesting dynamic because like, I've just noticed, for instance, like with, with my relationship, sometimes if one of the children are being difficult to one of us, there's kind of, I think sometimes I can see a little glint of feeling compassion and empathy because we're still your kids, mm. Mm. but then they're also your Gosh, grandkids. Yes. So you kind of, you're totally on their mm. side and totally loving them and feeling where they're feeling, but you'll often sort of go, oh, you look really tired, love, or is everything okay? So you're mm. like, I get mm. how it's easier, but I think it must also feel like a double whammy sometimes. Mm. <laughs> no, not really, no. Okay. It, it is still there that... Yeah. Um, you know, I think when you see, you notice your 
son, daughter, in my case, daughters, obviously, mm. uh, they're really tired, mm. you know, and, uh, and then I hear, you know, so, oh, how busy they are with, mm. with school, with church, with jobs. Mm. And I just think, well, yeah. especially those that live away, come up and just mm. rest yeah. <laughs> and just let, let me do yeah. it. <laughs> Because you don't stop being a parent. You don't ever stop being and a mum. So you, that's your motivation then? Because obviously that it happens is. to all of us when at times when yeah. the grandparents get involved. Yeah. It's because you want to give your child that rest. That's right. So, so you want to do that. But then also on top of that, you're actually really enjoying the time that you're having with the grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because that is so different. Mm. Um, yeah. And it's strange how it's different. It's lovely being a grandparent, mm. yeah. uh, but you can't always put your finger on it. And it's yeah. not because, oh, you can give them back at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not that at all. Yeah. You, are you the sort of grandparent you thought you'd be? Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think you'll be like as a grandparent? Oh, I'm really excited so already. <laughs> I am so excited already. I I was re I was a bit like you, Julie. I was really I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to have my mum present for the birth of my first daughter. Oh. And my parents lived in a different country at the time, so it was it felt really really precious. And she wasn't there like standing over me. I remember her be she was in the room, mm. but she kind of was really respectful and kind of stepped back and allowed my husband to kind of be you know the one that was really present. But it was the most incredible kind of feeling for me to know that she was there and I've already told my daughters <laughs> just to warn them I'm going to be there yeah. Yeah. Gonna if be I there wasn't a, if I wasn't a psychotherapist I would have been a midwife oh. I am so yeah. excited oh, me too so it's excited. like it's got to be like the pinnacle of yes. amazing isn't it to be able to watch a child come into the world yeah. what will they call you if you decided what you're going to be uh called? probably nana because that's me too oh. Oh. Yay! Yeah. I think Nana, Nana Claire. Is cool. Yeah, it's a bit cool. I'm with you. Is it, is what would you be called? I, maybe that's Northern. Okay. I've got, I, nanny. 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 Oh, yeah, there you go. Nanny. Is that? Okay. Nanny. I had a nanny, yes. and it was just, nanny to me okay. feels cuddly and affectionate, and yeah. I'm looking forward to being a, a nanny. I can't wait yeah. to be a grandparent. I know. I think once you know that you're not going to have any more babies, yes. like, that's what you have to fix your sights on. Yeah, I think that's probably a where, little bit, my, where my like, excitement oh, comes from. You know, yeah. that, that yeah. beautiful baby stage and that cuddling stage. And there is also a very special bond between grandparents and grandchildren. Yeah, there, there can is. be, if that relationship is done yeah. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that bond is really precious. I think there's a it's saying, so isn't important. it, where they say, Grandparents are like the fairy dust that gets sprinkled yeah. <laughs> on the lives of children. And it is, it's like, it I is. love... Like, I've enjoyed watching you and Dad become grandparents. And, yeah. you know, I remember a Christmas morning when they, you made them all line up outside. <laughs> and then they, like, threw open the door. <laughs> and there was music playing and there was balloons oh. and there was presents. And just all these tiny little sort of four- and two-year-olds. amazing. Ran That's through what the I living room to yes. There was chaos <laughs> everywhere. It was such, a, like, a, a lovely moment for the family to move into that and just, yeah. like... Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it feels like a celebration, doesn't it, in that sense? Right. Yeah, yeah. And thinking about what you were saying, Julie, about how it, it is, it's that sense of responsibility that you don't have. So the unconditional love is still mm. there, mm. isn't it? Mm. There's, there's no difference in kind of how, how conditional or unconditional that yeah. love is. It still feels unconditional, but yet it's somehow less complicated or less mm. kind of complex in mm. terms of the relationship. Mm. Because may, maybe, yeah, less yeah. pressure, less responsibility. Mm. But I think you it just gives a bit, a bit, there's more space to have a relationship with your grandchildren. You, you haven't got to worry about what other people are thinking about your parenting skills. <laughs> Going back, yeah. Yeah, we covered that in, in one We're of our episodes. About that before, yeah. Right, okay. Mm. Well, you haven't got to worry about that. You know, you just yeah. enjoy. Yeah, and you're still parenting yeah. Yeah. as a grandparent. You know, you're still exercising discipline and, mm. you know, teaching and things like that. But, um, but for me, I always think, how do the girls mm. want their children to be disciplined? How do they want to raise their children? Because mm. I don't want to step on their toes and do things yeah. differently, you yeah. know. So, so mm. uh, both John and I were very mindful of, you know, sort of yeah. what our girls like. 
for the way that they discipline their children. That's, so. a, that's a real so challenge, fun. isn't oh, it? Yeah. I guess when you've I mean, got four different daughters, all <laughs> yeah. parenting maybe in different yeah. ways. And in yeah, fact, they've all, they've all gone on this, you know, sort of low sugar, no sugar, sweet. You know, <laughs> grandparents, you know. It's your job it's to feed the, the job sweets. description, to have sweets and chocolate in the house. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's sort of like, oh, no sugar, this and low sugar. Absolutely. So now I've uh, sort of like cut right down. And um, I think it was Carla said to one of them, oh, Nanny doesn't like you to have sweets. And I says... I do. <laughs> I says, I'm backing up you. It's you who doesn't that's like that's the amazing. sweets. That is so funny. I, I had a real um, kind of issue with my parents because my mum was a gen dental hygienist. There was never sweets <laughs> or chocolate in our house growing up. My children go there for a week and they they, they get sweets, cakes, get taken out amazing. for meals. The cupboards are full of chocolates and treats. I'm like, what? How's that happened? In our defence, though, when they get handed back. Mm. At the end, they're high on sugar, <laughs> <laughs> and you can't get ah well. And you're just like one oh. day of their life. Oh, <laughs> well, actually, it's interesting to say that because when we had we had to make a slight change in dynamic when we decided to home educate because you get really involved in that, don't you? Mm -hmm. And so, mm. like my mum and dad will have the kids a day a week and do because your background is educating isn't it and it's teaching and mm. in the church in schools you've you've run community groups and youth groups you've just always done that sort of thing and so the kids come to you for a day of amazing discovery isn't it it's like they do poetry they they eat food they make things they cook amazing. things they, it's just everything life skills and education there's four of them crashed into the house and they, they do amazing stuff but we did have to kind of make a decision then didn't we if you're spending that much time on them it's not as simple as for instance if they're just seeing you once a week for an yeah. afternoon yeah, then difficult. i can step in and say yeah these are the boundaries and this is what we're going to do but mm. actually when you ask more of your parents you also need to give more of yeah, that that's true. Mm. you know you you and dad will have your moments where you have to be able to build your own relationship with them, mm. discipline them and treat them, get them to behave how you want them to behave in your house, mm. which mm. may be different to how I have them behave in my house. Mm. And I think that's one of the things, because I sometimes notice grandparents can, like you feel sorry for them sometimes because they can also get super tired. Mm. <laughs> but, it's, but you have to, like, for, for it to be a good, healthy relationship, you have to have power mm. yeah. and they have to have power and it ha that has to work. You can't have a relationship mm. where mm. You're, you become like an the other term of nanny. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Because yes. I'm interested with your peer groups. Have you noticed this year, I think it's this year, in the last few years, the UK has tipped over into more people over 60 than under the age of 16? So there's a growing population wow. in, in that age group. Have you noticed in your peers that they're much more active with their grandchildren or there's much more and more grandparents around than maybe yeah. your grandparents were? Yeah. It's funny, yeah, because um, I actually read a statistic recently that there are two million grandparents in Britain who have either taken less hours or given up work altogether yeah, yeah. to look after their grandchildren. Yeah. And when you're out and about during the day, I think actually that uh, grandparents or silver tops <laughs> <laughs> are the ones that keep this country running. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because, Completely. Because absolutely. all the shops and restaurants and tea houses, <laughs> they survive on, on us. True. Um, and I think that when you do go out, you see quite frequently, in fact, I saw an elderly lady, we were walking along the canal, and I saw an elderly lady. Now, she looked very vulnerable. Mm. She looked very frail. And she had this little toddler with her. And I thought, oh, how are you managing? She looked mm. over 80. Wow. And there she was with this little toddler. And I thought, wow, you are looking after your grandchildren. Mm. Or is it your great-grandchild? Yes. Yeah, quite possibly. And you see, you see that a lot with the, you know, sort of the elder, elderly or older mm, people, yeah. older generation, mm. uh, with their grandchildren, certainly, yeah. Yeah. So how would you, what would you recommend to, I suppose, those coming through now with pe new parents or how, how, what's a good way to navigate that? So you and Marina have got a good relationship and obviously how have you instigated that caring for the children or caring for the grandchildren? 
Well, for me, I think it's just naturally uh, a natural extension of being a parent. It's, uh, you don't think about it, you know, and, and whether or not um, how you should go about it. It just is that natural extension mm. of parenthood, yeah. as mm. far as I can see. Yeah. You know, yeah. There isn't really anything to negotiate in that sense. Mm. Can you look after the children? Yes, we can, so we'll do it. Mm. You know? yeah. But it is based on the relationship that you have with your girls, Exactly, isn't it? yeah. 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 You, you kind of, in that sense then, because a lot of people won't have no. an, an easy connection. So it's no. almost then, would you say, going back to your relationship first before you try and introduce yeah. a third party into that relationship, it's kind mm. of establishing a positive connection there. Mm. Yeah, quite possibly. And, and, and I think sometimes it's maybe about, we talk a lot, don't we, about having to go back and, and kind of face your own narrative and your own kind of story and mm. having your own children often brings up those memories about um, growing up yourself. And I think somehow it's important to kind of try and make peace with mm. some of that as much yeah. as you can because your story isn't necessarily, your relationship with your parents isn't necessarily going to be the same as your children's relationship with your parents. And you've got to allow the space for that to develop, mm. uh, you know, in, a, in its unique mm. way and its yeah. own precious way. Yeah. Because actually we, we talk a lot on this show about how um, life, is a is a mm. kind of a development right the way through it doesn't stop when we come a, become a parent yeah. it doesn't stop when we, we become a grandparent it continue we continue mm. to grow and change and I think we mm. need to allow you know if we've got kind of big issues with our mm. parents about you know our own upbringing we need to kind of allow a sense that they've, they've got the capacity to change and yeah, and do things differently themselves and mm. we need to kind of yeah, yeah. just be a bit mm. more grateful. I think as well though with this generation is that a lot of them don't have their parents close at hand anymore yeah, because they've had to go away for work or they moved away yeah. to university mm. and stayed where they went mm. to university. And so I think what's important then is that if you're in a, a good church yeah. with elderly people there, yes. that you know, you've got the you've got that generation there that can role model grandparenting yeah. and surrogate grandparents. And many do. Yes, yeah. they do. I remember yes. when our girls were small and we sort of went to church, we, we hadn't been Christians very long, we went to a church and there was a number of elderly there. And the girls used to run in there, <laughs> go and say hello, climb on their laps yeah. and uh, like, dig into their bags for sweets. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah. um, you know, because my parents lived up in Birmingham and, um, hmm. you know, so we didn't see grandparents that often. Oh, they didn't. Yeah. So it was nice for them. And the elderly in the church would say, oh, I love it when your daughters yeah. come and uh, sort of speak to us. And it made them feel special. And I think sort of like in a church setting yeah. where there are elderly, they can begin to feel That's that right. they're not of any value anymore. Yeah. Uh, but actually, they've got an immense value yeah. oh, for yeah. the children Absolutely. of the church. Yeah. Absolutely. I'd like us to have a little look at a VT. We've got a video of uh, your grandchildren, not my two. We've got them <laughs> of, uh, of my niece and nephew. So let's have a little look at this. Love Joy Kids action! My nanny and gramps are nice because they always make sure I'm happy and they cheer me up whenever I'm sad. My grandparents are nice because they homeschool us and, and teach us and also whenever we go to their house they're so kind that um, they sometimes give us some sweets. They always laugh and have a weird laugh. In a way like this, <laughs> and I think um, it they like giving out sweets because um, it's because my mummy's their mummy, and so so they would like to um, treat us well, and and they would like us and teach us about more things, so they'd so they'd make them like us more. Uh, and it's also funny when they sneeze because they go like, ah, I got you. In what way? How do they treat you differently to how your mum and dad treat you? My man is great because he lets us watch TV and my mum doesn't very often let us watch TV so it's nice and she's really generous. They're really fun. Nanny's are good at being fun and making the best chicken stew. Do you think that grandparents are important people to have around, and why? Uh, I think my nanny and grandparents are important to come around.
because they're part of our family and we love our family. That's why I like seeing them all the time. Because they are very nice. We wouldn't have um, nice grandparents if they wasn't around. So they, so, so we need, um, and so they're very good in people. What sort of grandparent are you going to be? When I'm a grandparent, I'm going to be happy and joyful and let my um, grandchildren play. Like, and, and I'm going to be funny and make them laugh all the time so they can be happy. I'm going to make sure that everybody is happy in the family and, and make sure that they're all well and if someone is not well, they'll help them. Aww. I love it. I love that meeting. I like the impression of the sneezing. Yeah. <laughs> and you make some mean chicken stew, I'm coming to your wow. house. <laughs> That's true. And the sweets, got found out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the TV. television. And the television. <laughs> Do you know, that's not strictly true. <laughs> They only watch one program, or maybe two. <laughs> but you know, what's one of the things that um, is important, I think, as a Christian grandparent. Yeah. As soon as we knew that our daughters were expecting, that's when we started praying. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so we prayed for our grandchildren before ever they were born, before ever they had a gender, yeah. and before actually. Uh, they grow up and have children mm. of their own. Mm. We've already prayed for their husbands and wives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I think yeah. that's important as a Definitely. grandparent that you are one of the prayer supports for the yeah. family Absolutely. because sometimes when you're in the, in the middle of it, yeah. you know, sort of you, you can't see the wood for the trees and you don't know how to pray and yeah. things are going yeah. crazy. Yeah. But as a grandparent, you can stand back and think, yeah. you know, yeah. They really need prayer right now about mm. that and so absolutely yeah, I think what that's a, that's really significant in terms of not I guess it's it's a, what I would see as grandparents offering an extra layer of protection mm, in a family yeah, a really significant layer of protection mm. because there are, there are times when parents we, we've talked about mental health on this show haven't we we've, we've talked about all the different stresses and how kind of the, the pressures mm. that we feel as mums to do it all and to mm. be everything I think having grandparents that are kind of uh, you know Know, that are present or that are even just pray, knowing that they're praying for us, yeah. they can offer that, just that, that spiritual protection, the emotional support, the physical support, mm. the childcare if we need it. There's so many different mm. kind of really significant roles mm. that grandparents play with our families. I love that you brought church into that and the church family because that's where we sit as a family. Our, our, our parents, mine and my husbands, are not local so we haven't done parenting with them local for many, many years. And I run a service now at the church that I'm a pastor at and we call it Thrive, it's for the older adults and we bump into some of this all the time where there is a generation that haven't got their grandkids local but are also beginning to feel devalued. And actually within the local church, I would love to see the local church working in harmony from all generations connected where each one works with what they're gifted in our strengths that, but that takes actually I think a, a lot of responsibility on each mm. generation to bring to the table and into the house what they can bring into the house so they're not just caregivers mm. they're not just the people that can bring sweets yeah. mm. they actually be able to confidently walk and go I have wisdom for life I have been walked with Jesus for a long time within my group there's 2,000 years worth of Christianity wow. in it we counted it up they've been <laughs> saved Amazing. we added it up 2,000 years worth as long as Christ like it was before Jesus, you know almost <laughs> as long as when Jesus 2,000 years worth of like walking with Jesus I'm like that has to impact mm, just yeah church yeah, life and so feeling like you know that up until before 1945 I think it's you were born before then you the silent generation then there's the baby boomers and all that that brings with that you'll be a baby boomer no doubt are you uh let's, just let's not go down that path <laughs> but, anyway, that's, <laughs> but um this in even in, in um, psalms it says this even in old age they will produce fil fruit and they will remain vital and green and they will declare the Lord is just mm. and I think it is our responsibility as those as parents now with children growing up to be able to instill in our children that our respect that is not just a respect to respect your elders but an understanding that they're a place to go through for wisdom yeah. for like a forum advice for guidance for courage to see what God like does so I 
I celebrate what you're doing. I love that you're giving that time to to help your grand to help your grandkids. Well, I think uh, well, I'm looking forward. I'm sure Johnny's as well. We're looking forward to as well seeing the children throughout all their you know yeah. sort of years and seeing them into their teenagers. I remember I was at um, a Christian conference and uh, the eldest one, uh, Luke, was just a couple of weeks old. And uh, we were at the convention and I was having, giving him a cuddle because he, he was crying or whatever. And I was just giving, I'd taken him out and giving him a cuddle. And I just, and then standing by the side of me was this tall teenager. Mm, he looked about yeah. 16. He had his shorts on. And I thought, I looked at Luke and I looked at him and I thought, one day. <laughs> it's not, and it won't be long either. No, not at all. Um, I, I um, really appreciate that at the moment because, you know, having a 14-year-old myself, like when, when, the, when my girls were little, my parents didn't live in the same country as us. Mm. So it's only really in the last four years that they've been around. But to see Libby's relationship with both her grandparents develop over the last four years mm. has been one of the most precious things to mm. me ever because she has, you know, even now in her kind of moodiness and, mm. you know, <laughs> just when she's being, <laughs> her, she's when she's at her teenage worst, <laughs> yeah, totally. you know, you, you bring my dad into the equation and her whole face lights yeah. up and she'll just want to be with him. She will just, they will that sit for special. hours just chatting about yeah. politics, about, yeah. and actually I love the fact that, you know, when I was growing up, there were things that I probably didn't feel able to talk to yeah. my mum and dad about, yeah. but actually my daughter can talk to them about anything. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's, I just think it's amazing. Yeah. And it really shows yeah. me how actually that narrative can mm. change and things can shift and evolve mm. and develop. And, you know, I suppose relationships can change even, you know, mm. going right the way on. That is actually a thread of the mum show throughout yeah. all yeah. of this, I think, actually, is that there's always a way back. There's always a way through yeah. because Jesus is the way. Mm. Yeah, and all the time right. you're centering your family on Jesus and even with your mm. relationships with your grandparents, we, they're going to be tricky at times. And also yeah. because... It's tricky with your parents oh, at times. God. It's tricky with your spouse's parents at times. You're talking yeah. about another generation. Sometimes you're talking about another culture. Mm -hmm. You're talking about another way of doing things. And I think there's a real a blessing in saying, okay, the one thing we do know is that Jesus is at the centre. Even yeah. if no one else believes it, we can believe Christ for a way. Yeah, absolutely. So we can say, I, I just yeah. refuse to believe yeah. that in Jesus there is no restoration, because mm. I know there is. Mm. So whatever that's mm. going to look like, and whether it's today or it's absolutely. not today, I'm going to choose that path that even if this relationship gets tricky or difficult, yeah. I'm going to believe that there is restoration possible because Christ paid, absolutely. paid that price. We have to believe that. There's always hope. Yeah, absolutely. So we're running out of time, but I would like to know if there's anything you would like to leave the grandparent or parent audience with before you leave. Yes. Well, I'm going to share a verse from Isaiah actually because and this is going from when I was a parent and a young parent and a new Christian parent mm -hmm. and I came across this Bible verse and it really meant a lot to me and as a older person I often share this verse with younger mums and that's from Isaiah 14 it says he tends his flock like a shepherd he gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those with young. Mm. And I think it's keeping in mind mm. that God is in control. He's gently leading. He's not pushing. He's yeah. not judging your parenting yeah. skills, but he's gently leading. I think that's lovely. Very lovely. But also, Billy Graham. Yeah. Let's have a quote Let's from do Billy it. Graham. Oh, Billy. Let's do it. <laughs> he said... The greatest legacy one can pass on to one's grandchildren is not money or other material things accumulated in one's life, but rather a legacy of character and faith. I love that. So good. I love that bit about faith. It, it lines up, yeah. doesn't it, within Timothy, when Paul says, um, the gift, I see the gift of faith. Yeah. That I believe was passed down to you first from your yeah. grandmother Lois and then your mother Eunice. And it is that gift of faith. It's so much more valuable than a bag of sweets. Or than, <laughs> not that I'm saying there's a problem, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on that. You can give them a few more sweets. Learned my lesson. But, but it's, it's part of that's It's true. Want, and it's, isn't it? And it's in the Bible all the way through where grandparents have a huge role to play. Even in the book of Proverbs, there's this mm. story at the end of Proverbs. And we all think it's this woman, this Proverbs 31 woman. Well, she doesn't exist. 
It was a story that grandmas, I know, well, if you know it, she's not a real woman. It's a story that grandmas actually um, uh, wrote and embellished. And actually, it's a culmination of the whole of the book of Proverbs into one section. It's about lady wisdom. It's about the wisdom of life. And it was grandmas sat around campfires maybe or at bedtime and told their sons and grandsons, this is the kind of woman you should look for. But in actual fact, this is the kind of wisdom that you should look for. And I just think that's a vital role that grandparents pay, play is that the passing on of knowledge and wisdom, yeah. not just caregiving. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it is amazing. And actually, yeah. I think we talk about being really intentional as mums. Yeah. And I think part of our intentional living needs to be perhaps asking God to open up pathways if they're closed. Yeah. How can we bring this wisdom back? Let's not accept yeah. that anymore. If there's difficulties, Lord, how can you help us to bring restoration? Yeah. to So we don't lose yeah. that wisdom. This has basically been a celebration of grandparents. Yeah. Which, why not? Because we all need them. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed joining us today. If you want to catch up with some more Mum Show chat, then you can head over to our website at Promise Collective. Um, or if not, we'll catch you very soon. Bye. Hello, parents. Don't forget to say hello. We're at promisecollective.co.uk. Bye!